Hello and welcome to Budget Consultants YouTube channel where we discuss construction costs and planning in Jamaica. If you're planning to build and want to understand construction costs, then this channel is for you. Alright, as everybody would have noticed, for the last couple of weeks I have not posted any videos as I have been dealing with some social as well as some business related matters. Now for persons who know me, they know I usually have a passion for improving whatever system I come and see. And because I represent construction and I have identified a lot of issues related to the sector, I'm using this platform as best as possible to ensure that the necessary confidence that is required is regained in the sector. Now, through several of my videos going forward, in and around every bit of calculation, I will be presenting some scenarios as to where the system is lacking and a possible solution. Now, I am not the type of person who spends a lot of time pointing out the issues. I am more solution-based. So I will identify the problems and then I will point out a possible solution. Separate and apart from that, I will still be doing my calculations. It's just that I'm going to have to do a mix of several different items because there's a lot that I have on my plate to deal with. Now, one of the things that I was discussing with a colleague recently is that the construction industry in Jamaica has the potential to solve a lot of problems by creating a lot of employment. Now, to my knowledge, construction is one thing that has a lot of sub-professions. It is just that many persons don't understand what those sub-professions are and how they apply to making the whole sector work efficiently. So whatever information I am presenting, just make it be known that I am trying to present an understanding of the sector, that the sector may develop in a way that persons locally and internationally can have confidence in it. And these persons are not current or potential homeowners only, but also other players in the sector. Now, more than three weeks ago, a young man contacted me about wanting to participate in the construction industry. And he was pointing out the fact that he's not very motivated based on what he sees and what he's hearing. Now, for that particular young man, there's only a few options that he's saying that's available to him. But he's not really interested in any of them because all of them come with a lot of negative activities. Now, after having that discussion with the gentleman, I said, I would do my next video to highlight the outlook of persons when it comes on to young men participating in illicit activities and I am going to also look at possible solutions that persons normally put forward. Now for the average young man that's growing up, when they are looking out for work locally, there's not a lot that is being presented in terms of options. Now your average young man or young woman is seeing a situation that a person is engaged in retail activity. These include selling off different type of items or working in some type of merchant related stores. Apart from the retail, there's also the idea of chopping the line. Very, very common amongst young people because as far as a young person is looking at it, they see persons who are participating in this activity acquiring some bit of short-term benefits. Then you have the regular man sit down on the corner and that's a talk. Then you have the wannabe bad man kind of scenario. And another very big and popular one amongst many young people is the get involved in a crime and violence kind of scenario. Now separate and apart from these, you'd have a few other little options which seems to be popping up like, you know, getting a car center work, go do a little bit of work here and there and, you know, doing some type of hustling to make ends meet. Now because I'm an advocate for the construction industry, I think many of these young men can be employed by this construction industry and it can take them out of a lot of negative activities. But for that to happen, the sector would have to be able to perform efficiently and it would have to show something to young people that will attract them to want to participate. Now the outlook of many persons is that they are not looking at building the sector, they are just saying participate. Based on the utterance by the average person, what you would get is an idea that if a youth just go pick up a trade, you could have get them off the street and you know they could have actually have a life outside of anything that's negative. But that is partially true and that is partially untrue. Yes, a youth can participate as a tradesperson and make some level of ends meet. The problem with it is that 
for the average person who is given the information, what they are not willing to do is to present a calculated outlook as it relates to how a person can benefit from the sector in the short or long term. Now, benefiting from the sector doesn't mean being able to pay your bills this week versus next week. It is how can you participate over several years and reap several different types of benefits. The attraction that the average person wants young people to have towards different trades can come only if there is a presentation of benefits. It cannot be the work by itself. It is what is coming with the work. Due to the fact that there is limited emphasis on the benefits that persons are going to get from participating in the sector, for the average youth, in their mind, what they are saying is, might as well, I go and wipe somebody's window. Because the benefits that I'm going to get from wiping window is not far from the benefits that I'm going to get participating in construction. Now, personally, I am not a fan of window wipers. It's a bit annoying for me. If I could help to develop a sector in a way that the average young person is more interested in getting themselves certified and practicing some type of a trade work instead of wiping my windows, I would be very, very happy. Now, to present a case for the industry, one of the things is that I am advocating for the development of proper building construction organizations that can present a case to the average person that they feel comfortable participating. Now, in this field of construction, many times customers think they are helping persons by giving them small bits of work. Instead of helping the sector, it, in, it instead helps to destroy the sector and likewise demotivate potential workmen from wanting to participate. Now, to present my case, what I'm doing is that I'm going to be using a set of calculations similar to another one that I presented before, and I'm just going to be using the case of a laborer. Now, when I did my video about suggested rates for laborers, I created a situation wherein, depending on the amount of work that is being provided, then you'd have a situation where you'd notice that the less work a workman gets, the higher his price is. And the more work that is being allotted to workmen, then the lower their price will be. Now, everybody in Jamaica wants a lower price, but nobody wants to offer enough work for workmen to be able to go home with a good pay. So, in alignment with my previous set of projected rates, I'm going to be presenting these, the same labor costs, and I'm going to go, go in a little bit deeper to demonstrate why it is that most young people will not want to participate. Because I am now saying to a window wiper, come off the road and go do look up labor hour. So if I am going to be doing that, I have to present a case that's calculated and it makes sense. Otherwise, might as well the man wiping windows. So the previous numbers that I used was that for a one day work, I said it was like $6,000 a day. For one week of work, I was saying $4,000 a day. For a fortnight, I was saying $3,500. And for a little bit of a fortnight, I was saying $3,400. And finally, I said $3,250 for a whole month of work. Now, one of the things I presented before was this income ratio. This is a breakdown as to how much money is made over time. And it's to demonstrate that over a one month period, the person that's going home with the highest income ratio is the person who is more employed. Now, why I put in the income ratio before was to kind of prove a point and I'm gonna to add to that point. So to add to that point, I am gonna say, if you give a man a day's work at your yard, Basically, you're not helping. If he's employed for you for one day, at the end of the month, he would only be able to go home with the one day's pay, which is the amount of days times the cost that he would get for the one day. That's his take home. Now, if I was to do a similar thing with all of these, the person that's going home with the most money is the person who is getting the less pay. But he's continuously working. Continuous work is one thing that makes it beneficial to the average young person to want to participate. And because work is not continuous at the one day or five day period, they will always want more money. And I agree that they should get more money because that's all you're gonna get for the month. For the first three scenarios here, from the one day to the five day or the 10 day, which is the fortnight, all of these persons is getting less than a typical minimum wage worker in Jamaica. So there will be no attraction for the average young person to see at the end of several different months and want to continue in construction. Now at the higher end, at the higher end, the best paid laborer 
who is working over the month is getting something that seems minutely livable. But remember, as a laborer, you don't need any education. Anybody can participate as a laborer. The only thing that I would recommend that a laborer should have knowledge of is to be able to properly mix concrete based on regulation, not just common practice. Now, for the average person, what they would want to do is take this part of the presentation and bring it across to a young person as to a good reason why they should participate in construction. But there is still a catch to this. For a young person to take even being a laborer seriously, they would have to be employed continuously, month in, month out, with an organization. Now, if you cannot develop organization to employ these persons, you cannot then confidently say to them, it makes sense to participate in the sector. Enough properly maintained, properly established organizations are not built. And for the few organizations that's built, there's a lot of errors in the way they are operating. So most of them cannot employ persons beyond a limited amount of time. This is going to be a big turn off. Now, there are laborers out there that would want more money than this. Many of them would want the $4,000 per day. The only way you can get them to the 3250 dollars is you'd have to be employing them in the long term. But there has to be something else that comes with this. And that is additional benefits. The additional benefits that I'm making mention of is what I have presented here, which are short-term benefits, long-term benefits, post-employment benefits, and termination benefits. Now, no one wants to talk about this. You cannot be telling anybody to take a profession serious where their benefits are only short-term. All of these that are presented here are short-term benefits. It's only immediate pay. After a person works for one day, the only benefit they have here is their pay. So they're always going to drop their price up because what else are they getting? It's the same thing for a week's work. Unless you have them employed in the long term, then you can say, I am offering you a less price, but I am offering you more benefits. So for 3 250 I am offering you the security of knowing that I have a well-established organization that can guarantee you your pay every two weeks or every month. In. And the payment that I'm going to be giving to you is through a financial institution to ensure that it reflects that you are formally employed. If you cannot offer that to the average young man, I support them in saying them now want to take up no construction work. Another benefit that you'd want a young man or a young woman to know that they are going to be getting at this reduced price is the fact that they are formally employed so they will over a time period have access to things like loans. The fact that the organization is formally registered and is engaging in formal business, things like insurance on site are going to be provided and likewise, because the organization is formally recognized, you as a professional who is participating in this sector will be recognized for the time period that you are working with this particular company. In terms of formality, it is really pointing you to post-employment benefits. You want it to be a case that if a worker worked at a particular company, and they stopped working and they went somewhere else, they can be recognized by the use of documented data coming from one organization to the other. Now, the final thing that a person who is going to bargain for the lowest price would want, some type of severance pay. In other words, in the event that you were to fire me for no practical or documented reason, there's some type of benefit that I can get for my work with your organization over a certain period. Now, if you cannot come with these benefits, then do not say that you are trying to help anybody by telling them to participate in construction. With every little handout of work that you are giving to workmen, you are not doing them any favors. If you want a person to work for less time with less benefits, then they are supposed to get better pay. Now, if you are going to hire a person for only one month alone, you don't have an organization, you cannot offer any of these benefits. No severance. They cannot leverage the experience apart from just verbally you saying that they work for you. They have no access to loans because there's no recognized part that they are working and there's no level 
of secured pay. In other words, them can't show at the end of the day, say, you even go pay them. I believe that them fair for the highest price. Whether it's one day or 20 days, the fact that an organization is not built up for the interest of both the person who wants the service and the person who is offering the service, I think the service should be expensive. The only way you get these figures down is that you have additional benefits. Why people want most young persons to just come in the trade regardless of the benefits factor is that everybody is looking someone to exploit. Exploitation is the interest of most persons in saying to participate. They want prices down, but they want somebody to do the work and get almost nothing for it. Which is really just a colonial tactic. Work people, but give them nothing. That is the attitude of the sector.